And uh, thank you for staying late to help me with the inventory. Always a pleasure, Mr. Calderon. Shall we come in early tomorrow afternoon to finish it? No, just be here at the regular time. And enjoy the day with your families. Good night. Good night, Mr. Calderon. Good night. Good night, sir. Good night, Maria. And thanks for staying to help us. You're welcome, sir. Maria, I know it's a beautiful night, but I'm responsible for all of you girls who work here at the club. I feel better if you stayed a few minutes and let me drive you home. You're very thoughtful, but I know the section, and uh, as you say, it's a beautiful night. Very well, but please be careful. I will. Good night, Maria. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night, Mr. Calderon, and thank you. Cuts on both of her arms, exactly like the others. Get her down. What will you do now, Inspector Ramos? Do you know the name of Adam Rourke? Every detective in the world has read his book on sex crime motivation and investigation. And he is my personal friend. I'm sending a cable to New York tonight. to see you, Adam. Welcome to Manila. Miguel, it's nice seeing you again. You know, it's been four years, and from the looks of your face, I'd swear you haven't aged more than ten. <laughs> what's up, Pare? Let me take this. No, no, come on, what's up? You're American directness. You don't even permit me the courtesies of greeting. Listen, I know a chief inspector of homicide doesn't send plane tickets to their friends just so they can fly in and sit by the ocean and watch colorful bunkers go by, right? Besides, I got to know that particular look pretty well on your last trip to New York. What's up? All right, my friend, I'll tell you on the way home, and I'll tell you some more when we get there. My car is there, let's go. Okay. All exactly the same. All neat, all deep. All precisely 10 centimeters long. Not a fraction, more or less. 
on the inside of both forearms of every single victim. Very calculated and very professional. And every victim a young, attractive girl. No deviation? None. Are you absolutely sure each victim was completely drained of blood? Except for fractional amounts in the hands and head. No, Adam. It could not have been done with anything like that. The incisions are too thin, too neat. We have talked to every friend, every family. Anyone who could help us find any kind of link, any kind of pattern that could tie the victims together. Do you know what we found? No. There's no connection. And Adam, it has to be only one man. No two persons can kill so many people exactly the same way each time. Except for one thing. What's that? What if the killer were Siamese twins? <laughs> Since you're supposedly here to help my brother, Mr. Rock, it might be better if you remembered the pressures on him instead of making jokes. I'm glad you're here. Adam, I want you to meet my sister, Sylvia. How do you do, Sylvia? I'm sorry if that last remark created the wrong impression. No apology is necessary, Mr. Rock. But it might help if you remember that you are in a country whose customs and attitudes are not your own. Sylvia, Adam is an experienced lieutenant of homicide himself. And he is also my friend. Do I make myself clear? Quite clear, Miguel. Now, what is it you wanted? To pour myself a drink. But if I'm disturbing... No, no, no. You know all about this. Go ahead. Is there anything I can get for you, Miguel? A rum and calamansi, please. And, um, for our guest? The same, if you'd be so kind. Late yesterday, one of my men raised the fact that Maria Cortez was working as a hostess at the Barrio Club here in the city. Have you done a follow-up over there yet? No, frankly, I wanted to talk to you first. I'm glad you did. That gives me an idea, Miguel. You don't have any American working on the force, right? Therefore, the possibilities of somebody spotting me for a cop are pretty thin. Secondly, I'm a stranger here. So there's no chance of running into any previous acquaintances. Miguel, this is probably the best setup you've ever had for putting in a plant. Now, let me function as an undercover man. I can pass for a tourist. I'll even wear colorful sports shirts and carry two cameras, if you like. What do you say? No, Adam, no. Thank you, Sylvia. We don't know why he drains the blood from his victims. We can only assume that there's some peculiar twist in a sick mind. Do you think there'll be other killings of the club? Not necessarily. Of course, you don't have enough men to warn, much less protect every attractive girl in town. And if our killer even suspected we were trying, he'd pick up and move to a new area, a new city. Then it would be harder to look for him. And in the meantime, there will be more killings. Right. I'll do some digging on my own about this last girl. Maybe it'll help speed things up for you. No heroics now. No foolish chances. Just information, all right? then there should be no connection between the two of us for a few days. Anyway, I'll provide you with a contact man. Good. Adam, there is another possibility I would like you to know. There are many sophisticated people among us, but there are many more who are not. There have been some rumors in the villages about a strange blood cult, voodoo and the like. And since none of the victims' blood had ever been found on the scenes of the murders, people have begun to think and suspect that it had been taken for some fiendish purpose. Really? I know, I know. But anyway, I would like you to think about it. I'll do better than that. First thing tomorrow morning, I'll go down to the main library, and I'll read up on Count Dracula and the Medieval Witches. My brother is trying to help you. And I'll remember what he said, Sylvia. Don't move. There, at the base of your neck, two small holes. Yes, fang marks. Sylvia, 
I think that... And I think that only a complete fool would ignore all the possibilities that might apply, even the occult. Regardless, I would like you to bring Adam into town. No thanks, Miguel. I'll call a cab. If there is to be no connection between us, there should be no connection at all, not even a cab driver. Miguel, I'd prefer if... And I would prefer that you help us in this matter. Since you have just returned after two years of studies in London, no one will recognize you at this hour. The Luzon Hotel is very clean. I'm sure you'll get a room there. My man will contact you tomorrow. Adam, here is additional material that I prepared for you. Thank you for your hospitality and the spirited conversation. My sister Sylvia is very headstrong, but she means well. I hope you two get along well together. Miguel, I didn't know you had a sister. In here, yes. Her father was connected with an English firm here in Manila before the war. During the occupation, he joined as a guerrilla. He was very brave, but very unlucky. And her mother? Her mother died a few years back. So your family adopted her? Ganyan lang ang buhay. Say la vie? Así va la vida. Dances with the world, ¿qué? I just ran out of languages. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Harvey boy, let's go. Harvey? Yes, Harvey. I always take him with me whenever I'm working. Oh, by the way, who runs the Barrio Club? His name is Calderon. Uh-huh. Thanks. The hotel is two blocks back on the other side of the street. I hope you'll forgive me for that little joke I made back at the house. Oh? Was that a joke? I see. Well, I guess there isn't too much more to say except good night. Except one thing. Yes? Right now, my brother needs the help of people who can equal his dedication. Not that of... Of wisecracking skeptics who ignore the possibility of the occult. All right, I'm just surprised that you believe in such things. Do you have all the answers to light, Mr. Rourke? Not the last time I checked, no. Well, then it might surprise you to find out that there are still some mysteries that science and policemen seem unable to answer. Good night, Mr. Rourke. I came here to help Miguel, and I intend to do it. Because you're his sister, it would make things a lot more pleasant if I had your friendship, too. But I don't need it. Now, in the interest of friendship, I'll make a simple bargain with him. I won't form any final opinions of this case till all the facts are in, if you do the same with me, okay? All right. Now, if you promise not to tell a soul, I'll let you in on one conclusion I've made already. Really? What? Regardless of how it turns out, you must admit that someone has come up with a novel idea for a blood bank. Why, you crude. going to ask you something very personal, but you have that business before pleasure look in your eyes. Not really. Yes, really. You're very perceptive. Well, I'm not very subtle, but be sure to ask for me when that look changes. My name's Teresa. Good evening, sir. What would you like? Whatever you make first. Uh, very difficult. Best round. The best way. 
and no charges for any of these doors for strength. Your eyes are as sharp as you drink, huh? A part of my job, are. Oh, excuse me. Yes? Maybe you can help. This club is run by Mr. Calderon, isn't it? Yes. Where can I find him? Why? I want to talk to him. You're a good man. I'm a stranger. And right away, you spotted the fact that I'm here to rob Mr. Calderon, and maybe even kill him. Maybe you are all right, Pare. But I still won't tell you until you tell me. I'm a writer. Magazine articles in general, and anything else I can get in particular. Now, I read the newspaper story about the murder of Maria Cortez. Yes. I would like to put my hands on the one who did that. Then you can help. And Calderon, too. You'll find his office at the top of the stairs, Martha. Thanks. But you must not. He's very strict about that. Now we shall have to wait until after Serena's dance. Me. What about us? Aren't we ever going to have any time for us? 
Is there never going to be any rest for either one of us? Lorena, one of these days we must find it. Uh, excuse me. This is a private office. Oh, I'm awfully sorry. I thought that was a door to a hallway. Get out of here. I'm looking for Mr. Calderon. I have some very important business with him. I'm Calderon. I have nothing to discuss with you now. Outside. Uh, no offense. Uh, I just made a clumsy mistake. Please, accept my apologies. Get out. You must be awfully tired after that dance. But it was wonderful. Like I said before, ma'am. <laughs> no offense. I'm leaving. <laughs> Sorry. Well... When were you talking to him? On the stairs, a moment ago. What did you tell him? I believe I said thank you. For what? For the compliment he paid me on my dance. I'm sorry. It's just that... just that everything makes me nervous ever since Maria was... I know. But don't you think you should go and talk to him? I'll be right back. Well, I think Maria had more spirit and more laughter than anyone I ever knew. You met her at the club, right? Yes. How long had you known her? About two years. Now that she's gone? I don't know, except that I miss her very much. And sometimes when I think of the way she was... Oh, good evening, Mr. Caldwell. Good evening, Teresa. Oops, now don't worry. I was just leaving. Please. Are you all right, Teresa? Yes, Mr. Caldwell. Are you sure? Would you like to go home early tonight? No, I'm fine, really. Good. Then would you excuse us, please? I want to have a word with this gentleman. May we talk? There are many problems to running a business like this. My nerves sometimes, well, I'm afraid you startled me at such a moment in the office. It's my turn to apologize. My pleasure, Mr. Calderon. You know where I come from. Folks don't consider a man a man unless he knows how to make an apology and accept one. That's a very good philosophy, Mr. Rourke. Adam Rourke. Bueno. Yes, Mr. Calderon? Whatever Mr. Rourke would like. And have it brought down to us, please. Another of your specials, Marino. And what would you like? Nothing, thank you. Well, since you said it was important business, I suggest a little more privacy. There's nothing secret about it. At least you can sit in more comfort. Please. Whatever you say. some kind of personal argument, but I... Whoop. There I go again, sticking my clumsy nose in where it doesn't belong. You know, that's the trouble with all writers. They're just plain nosy. You must be a good writer because you're very perceptive. We were having an argument. I hope you got it all worked out. Just one of the usual conflicts between a headstrong performer and a practical businessman. Mm, but what a woman. Well, those people out there were reacting to her like a bunch of slaves, all hopped up on berry juice, coming to worship the high priestess. I know I'd buy a ticket just to walk down the street with her. Excuse me, was this for you, Mr. Calderon? For Mr. Rourke, Elena. Here you are, sir. Thank you. How are your parents, Elena? Fine, thank you. They're visiting relatives in Zamboanga right now. Please give them my regards when they return. Thank you, I will. Nice meeting you, Mr. Rock. Boy, you sure got good taste in the women you hire. Mr. Rourke, it's very pleasant talking with you. But, well, I hope you appreciate that as owner of the club, I have many things to do. Just what was it you wanted to talk to me about? Well, like I told you, I'm a writer. Oh, not a famous writer, but I've always been able to spot an interesting story and make a pretty good living at it. Do I understand that you want to do a story about the club? What I really had in mind was the girl, Maria Cortez. Mr. Rourke, 
I don't think I'd want to exploit you. Now, I know how you feel, and I admire you for it. But I'm not talking about a piece of cheap sensationalism. Human interest is what I'm after. Of course, I'm going to need some background details to make the story ring true, or from yourself and other people who knew her. Mr. Caldron, this story can make the Barrio Club famous around the world. And you'll have full approval of everything I write before I send it in for publication. Now, what do you say? Are you from the police? That's very funny. I don't think so. Oh, you would if you know how I reacted to the sight of blood. But I'm sure they'll be around sooner or later. Aren't you? Probably. Yet it seems strange that a tourist should interrupt his vacation for such an unpleasant matter. Mr. Calderon, a writer is a writer. He's always looking for an interesting story. I see. Now, if you agree, I can guarantee that the results will be very profitable for both of us. What do you say? Let me think about it. I'll try to contact you in the morning and give you my decision. Fine. Where are you staying? Luzon Hotel, room 12. I do admit it's an interesting idea. It's just that I have to reconcile my previous affections for Maria with such a concept. Good night, Mr. Rourke. Good night, sir. No. Nope, there couldn't be that much of a room shortage. Can I assume he worked alone? Sorry about that. through for me. Well, Harvey, old man, you've done it again. You don't know what this means to me. And one of these days, I promise you, I'm going to get you a complete paint job and an overhaul. Wait, Harry, wait. Wait, please. Be the less fortunate. I'm hungry, Harry. I'm hungry. Oh, you are truly most kind. May you be happy. Are you all right? Fine, fine. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. I'm nothing but the class Don't worry old about fool. It, Please fine. forgive me. And I wouldn't even blame you if you hit me. Look, I said it's fine. Beating. Don't worry about it. This guy isn't safe anywhere anymore. And I wouldn't take that knife to the police if I were you. It's a knife, isn't it? A grace for a baron. Yes, a favorite attack weapon in this part of the world. Uh, will you help me up and walk me to that bench down there? Why should I? Because Miguel said that you not only had a sense of humor, but you're kind and generous. Thank you. And that bundle, if you don't mind. 
I had a feeling you wouldn't be able to last till morning to take this to Miguel. <laughs> You're quite an actor. So were you, while you were talking to Calderon last night. I don't remember seeing you. I didn't want you to. My job is not only to relay information, but also to stay as close as possible to you without arousing suspicion. Oh, yes, I know I don't present a very capable picture at the moment. But, well, the bundle you're carrying. It's uh, modern science's contribution to my lack of parts. You'd be surprised how well I can move when I'm wearing it. Like half an hour ago when I pulled your victim across the street. Obviously a suicide. <laughs> suicide? The three bullet holes in it? Sparks. Tell me. You carry a gun? Uh-huh. Then why didn't you use it when our friend paid me a visit? I regret that I didn't see him until he was on your balcony. Well, fortunately, you were better prepared than I. But I promise to be more alert next time. Thank you. That's very consoling. Leave it wrong with me. However, I doubt if we'll find more than a few smudged fingerprints on it. What I'm more interested in is finding out if... If your visitor had connection with Calderon. That's right. You'll hear from me. By the way, my name is Herrera. Now give me some more money and pat me on the shoulder sympathetically. I still think you're an expensive proposition. You know that, don't you? How's that, hmm? Thank you, thank you. I've never seen such generosity. Bless you. Uh, aren't you forgetting something? Oh. <laughs> Thanks. I think you'd look more peculiar with three than I do with one. Doesn't anybody sleep around here? She's kidding. She's got to be kidding. She's not kidding. Julia, wait! She set you up for that one and you fell for it. How? She could change that fast. Your ego, that's what. You overactive schoolboy. Knotted. Clod.
don't believe it. I still don't believe it. But there you are. Positive she used to work in the club. I was even talking to her the night before last. Was she there last night? I imagine so. Why? You did not see her? I didn't make it to the club. Why not? I, uh... I was busy. I was out in the country, just on the other side of the city. Adam, is something the matter? There's something you're not telling me? No, there's nothing the matter. It's just that I'm nervous about coming here. It's still too soon to start taking chances. It's not too soon for her. Yes, I'm sorry. I wish I had followed my instincts last night. What do you mean? I was there. She came home drunk. I thought about seeing if I could help, but I didn't. You were there? Yes. Then you are on to something. Not about last night. That was pure coincidence. Oh, I, I'm sorry, Miguel. I. I didn't realize you had company. Well, what is it you wanted? Oh, uh, nothing. I, I'll talk to you later. Well, I was not expecting another killing so soon. I know how you feel, but give me two or three more days. As regrettable as this is, we still don't have anything solid to go on, Miguel. I know. But I'm going back to the morgue to look for some more clues. Anything that we have missed, any clues. Adam, two or three more days, that's all I can afford. Oh, oh, I, I am um, just coming out. There's something I want to say to you about yesterday. There's something I want to say to you. Oh, uh, yes. Fascinating woman, isn't she? Yes, she is, Mr. Roy. Just thought I'd check in since I hadn't heard from you. Although I've got the impression you tried to get in touch with me the other night. No, I... I've been busy the last two days. Make a decision yet? Decision? On that story I want to write. Oh, yes, the story. No, I haven't. But I'm sure it'll be all right after we've discussed a few details. Glad to hear it. Maybe we can start tonight. No, not tonight. Come <laughs> on! 
mustn't. There can be lots of trouble. I'll take my chances, Elena. Thank you. Get out of here. I told you once before, it is not permitted. I was only trying to help, fellas. You made me trouble the last time. Now you mind your business. Well, if that's the way you feel about it, okay. I think I don't like you as much as before. Sylvia, I'm glad you told me about the trick you pulled on Adam. It was a silly thing to do, but a very feminine one. However, no matter what you feel about Adam, I ask you not to do anything that can interfere. Sylvia? Yes? Could it be possible that you no longer feel the same way about Adam as when he first arrived? It's possible. I see. In a way, I'm glad. Adam is a fine man. In another way, I hope you would consider your emotions more carefully before giving them to men who are in our kind of work. That is one reason why I never got married. I wouldn't like the woman that I love to ever feel the loneliness if I were to be killed suddenly. That's very good advice, Miguel. It's a pity you didn't give it to me before I realized I was in love with him. That's another reason why I never got married. What is? That I still don't understand women. No, Miguel, no. It's still too soon. But it is my responsibility to protect your life, too. Miguel. You know as well as I do, they'd simply claim that I was trespassing. And legally speaking, they'd be right. Actually, they didn't hurt me that much. If the truth were known, I'm more embarrassed than anything else. I won't wait much longer, Adam. You won't have to. Now, I'm sure we're on the right track. But all we have right now is strong suspicions. Unless, of course, you found proof to tie Caldron in with the hotel room attack and Teresa's murder. Have you? No. Okay, then let's stick with the original plan. Now, what have you found out about Calderon and the woman Serena? All we know here is that they arrived about two years ago with Peruvian passports and have taken out citizenship papers. They had enough money to buy the club and made it a success. We have no idea where either the money or where they came from before that. But I have sent a wire to the police at Lima for more details.
Sit up, Fredo. Get back to the bar. Go on. Go on. Go on. I see that our easy-going rider also has a temper. Not really. What's the trouble? I'm afraid Morena's getting a bit overzealous again. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry for the interruption. The dance will resume in just a moment. Perhaps there's something we can do over there. Excuse me. I'm sorry about interrupting your dance, ma'am. Please accept our apologies. It's just that Moreno is loyal and Mr. Calderon was angry with him for letting you up to the office that first time. Believe me, we'll be more than happy to help you with your story. Oh, he told you about it. Yes, it sounds very interesting. I'm glad to hear that from you. Is he watching us? No. Calderon. No, he's talking to some men over there. Please. No matter what he may have told you, please believe nothing until I've had a chance to talk to you privately. Be here tomorrow night at nine. I'll find you. He used to be out of the club on business. Will you do it? Gladly. And I warn you, for your sake as well as my own, please say nothing of this to him. He's charming. But he can also be strange and violent. Will you trust me? Yes, I'll trust you. I need a friend very badly now. And I don't think fate could have brought me a better one than you. Thank you. I won't let you down. No, I must leave. Good night. Sorry, but you are very impulsive. Besides, it's not nice to hit a cripple. Herrera, would you mind telling me how you did that? Oh, just an old-fashioned hip throw. Oh. Well, what's up? Or did you just drop by to give me a judo lesson? I was coming to your hotel. This afternoon, the parents of a young woman named Elena Munoz reported her missing. They returned from a trip late last night and found a room had been torn apart. As in a violent fight, but there was no blood. Elena Munoz. She works in the wire club. Of course, that was the girl who tried to keep me from going into Calderon's room. Was she in the club tonight? I didn't see her. Well, Miguel called me and said to tell you right away. He also said that if the body is found, he's going to move in on Calderon no matter where we stand. I don't blame him, but tell him this. I spoke to the dancer, Serena, tonight. She seems a little upset about something. She wants to talk to me tomorrow night after Calderon leaves the club. Now, I don't know what she's up to, but I think it's worthwhile looking into. We can't afford to jump the gun. We don't have enough evidence. But I want to give this guy enough rope to hang himself. Then you're convinced he's the one. In the meantime, have him wait for a telephone call tomorrow night. And when it comes to move, and move fast. All right. And remember to be careful. How can I ever thank you for that advice? Oh, uh, did you say that was a hip throw? Uh-huh. Uh. Are you all right? Uh, I think 
think so. Uh, just, just a little embarrassed. You're embarrassed. Are you sure you're all right? I didn't hurt you. No. And it's reassuring to know that you can take care of yourself. I'm great with women, but you should see me with one-legged men. <sighs> what are you doing here anyway? I thought I told you I didn't want you getting into any dangerous situations. And you never know what can come flying through that window. Well, I'm sorry. It's just that I was so worried about you, I, I had to make sure you were all right. Okay. You see I'm all right? Now get going. No, I, I had another reason for coming. Miguel just received word from his office. The report from the police at Lima stated that Calderon fled the country after he was implicated in the death of a plantation owner from whose factory some young women had disappeared over a period of two years. What about the woman? Her name is Serena Brioso. She's been known to have lived with him for two or three years. Anything else? No, that's all. Oh, yes, um, Miguel tried to contact Herrera right away, but he couldn't find him. That's probably because he was with me. By the way, does Miguel know you're here tonight? Well, uh, I didn't tell him. Great. Okay. Out. Wait. Uh, since you're so worried about what can come in through that door, well, the only thing that can come in now is moonlight. interest you in a team sweater with the number of your local mafia chapter embroidered on the front. No. Well, then how about a slightly used but official Sherlock Holmes decoding ring? No, I guess not. Well, happy hunting. His secret. Look, all I wanted was a simple story. I know. But you can still help me, and now you must help yourself, too, whether you want to or not. What do you mean by that? I can't tell you any more now. Calderon has all his men watch and record everything. He understands tonight in the usual way. But his plans have been changed, and he's to be out of the club until tomorrow. Can you meet me tonight, an hour after closing? Louisa, come here. While you're having a drink, one of the hostesses can make your evening more pleasant. But don't stay too long. That will create suspicion, too. Louisa, this is Mr. Rourke. Good evening, Mr. Rourke. Uh, good evening. Well, I can see Mr. Rourke is impressed with you already. That should make the evening enjoyable for you both. Please remember what we did. Good night. What are you doing here? I told you I wanted to help. And I told you that if you... I know what you told me. Sir, the extra pair of eyes isn't going to hurt. Besides, there are two of Miguel's men who are also here watching me. So please don't worry. Where are they? And they're being a great deal more subtle about it than you are right now, sir. I don't want you here after tonight. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Now that you're here, you didn't happen to notice anything peculiar about Calderon, did you? Well, I only met him for a few minutes this afternoon. He hasn't been around at all tonight. Maybe it's just my feminine curiosity, but have you taken a look at those armbands Serena wears? 
Not really. I've never seen anything like it before. Except once in a London museum when I was studying design there. I think they're Aztec or perhaps Inca and very old. Well, she's from South America. She could have bought them down there. Yes, but if they're genuine, they would have cost a great deal of money. It might be worth looking into. Good idea. And now, sir, I'll get you a drink. Would uh, something with rum please you? Yes, something with rum. Thank you, sir. There's nothing to fear. Don't worry. We won't be caught. We were stupid to leave the other bodies where they could be found. From now on, we will bury them here. I will take care of the American writer tonight. Afterward, there will be no question, no trace. Thank you for waiting. My pleasure, Serena. May I offer you a drink? Let me do that. What would you like? The same as you, my cautious detective. Of course I knew. But knowing just makes me feel more relaxed, safe in your presence, away from the city and Calderon. Well, here's to a very beautiful and a very perceptive lady. Now, perhaps if you told me what was on your mind, we could make you even more secure and relaxed and do something about it. Yes, but it's such a beautiful night out. Couldn't we enjoy some of it while we talk? I don't suppose you've ever lived with a maniac, have you? No, not lately. You must help me, and it must be done quickly. That's why I'm here, Serena. I met Calderon in South America, where he was a wealthy plantation owner. He courted me, bought me expensive presents. He took me on weekend trips to beautiful, romantic places. After I'd been living with him for a few months, I found he was married. He said he would kill me if I ever left him. When his wife found out about us and threatened to divorce him, he killed her. 
Oh, he did it very cleverly. And they never found a body, just evidence of suicide. After playing the role of bereaved husband for a while, he sold the plantation and brought me here where he forces me to dance in his club. And what about Maria Cortez? Yes, he did it. That wasn't very clever, was it? The way he left her body? He was having an affair with her, and when she told him she was going to be married, he became some kind of fiend. And I suppose you know about Teresa's murder? Yes, I know. Why couldn't you have gone to the police as easily as you came to me? Because they have been more stupid than you. And that new girl at the club, the one you obviously know very well. Wouldn't you be interested to know what could happen to her? In all your cleverness, you forgot to consider the possibility that I have an immunity to the drug I put in all the bottles. So that's how you did it. Not me, but a loyal servant. In the ancient culture of my people, not my ancestors, my people, a form of human sacrifice was made to appease the sun god. But your historians have been inaccurate in recording the reason why. One was for a form of criminal punishment, similar to the method used in your present society. But the other, that had to do with the true meaning of prolonged life. And what could be more simple and effective than life's blood taken from one woman to sustain the beauty of another? A combination of that blood, electrical energy from the sun harnessed in a small container, and a powder ground from the roots of trees that live to be hundreds of years old. That is what gives continually renewed life to those of us that were chosen as golden goddesses. But to ensure that we would never be subject to the damaging effects of a normal life, Short spent blood was first drained from our bodies. 
and any person that dared interfere would seem to be a criminal. And you have dared. I'm Antonio Munoz, Lina's father. I wanted to help the policeman in my own way, but I'm not very good at following people. You did all right. Let's go. I use your phone. Why? There's a killer loose, a homicidal maniac with delusions of ancient history. Now, can I use your phone? No, you're right in there. Thanks. Thanks, huh? He breaks in and ruins a man's slip. Better he should steal my blood.
Well, Adam, uh, no more words except that you will always be welcome. Thank you, Miguel. Before you leave, I have a gift for you. Oh. I wonder where he is. Ah. Sorry I am late. Here he is. I hope you like him. Harvey? But I thought I had him in here. Adam, our last piece of undercover work. <laughs> Since you took so much punishment while you were here, we thought that one of you should return in good shape. So that you would not think of us as being inhospitable. Oh, never inhospitable, but sometimes slightly arco. Rara, I'll buy you a pack of cigarettes. But I smoke cigars. Today you smoke cigarettes. Will you be back soon?